Welcome back to Morning Joe. He's been called one of America's most famous and most loved American war correspondents. Journalist Ernie Pyle was twice the age of most soldiers he wrote about while embedded with them on the front lines during World War II in some of the war's worst places, including Normandy, North Africa, and points of the Pacific. Pyle's poignant articles brought the war home to American readers with his stories running in hundreds of newspapers. His dedication to documenting American soldiers in the battlefield led him to repeatedly risk his life and ultimately lose it. Pyle's courageous story is now the subject of a new book titled The Soldier's Truth, Ernie Pyle and the Story of World War II. Joining us now, the author of that book, executive director of the Public Policy Writing Workshop at the University of Chicago's Harris School of Public Policy, David Christinger. David, thank you so much for joining us. Certainly an important story on a Memorial Day. Remind the viewers, if you will, just a little bit more as to who Ernie Pyle truly was and the influence he had during World War II. Well, first of all, thank you for having me. Um, second, Ernie was maybe the most unlikely of war correspondents. He got his start in journalism in 1923, um, and he started in Indiana and then moved to Washington, D.C. He worked his way up through the newspaper. Um, and really where he started to kind of figure out his style of storytelling was when he started one of the first columns about aviation, the early days of aviation in the, the 1920s and 30s. And then after that, he became a roving correspondent for about seven years, and he traveled all across the country, um, crisscrossed the country 35 times, um, put on hundreds of thousands of miles, wrote hundreds of thousands of words, and his style of writing, the way he described it was he wrote letters home. He went to places that other people couldn't travel and he wrote those letters uh, so that people could sort of understand lives that were different from their own. And so when the war started, he had this idea that he would go overseas and he would kind of be a travel writer for a few months and then maybe move on um, from the from the front lines to maybe India or China and, and kind of keep that travel column going. But once he got to North Africa, his writing um, really started to connect with with readers back home and newspapers started syndicating his column. Um, eventually, he his column was running in about 500 uh, newspapers, both daily and, and weekly newspapers. At the height of his popularity, he had 14 million daily readers. He wrote mm. a daily column. Um, so, I mean, the the amount of the reach that he had and the impact that he had is, is really unprecedented. And I don't, you know, nobody can claim those numbers today, even. And um, and so he he put a uh, what made him special was that he really put a human face on the war, where you know we had millions of troops serving overseas. It was really really difficult for the average reader to to picture and to understand what was going on. And so Ernie tried to to paint that picture for them. So David, tell us a little bit, a couple of sort of surprising things you learned as you as you put together this book and really dug into his life that now, you know, readers who you know may have heard the name Ernie Pyle but don't quite understand his importance, you know, what will what will surprise and touch them from what you found? Well, I, there are a couple of moments in in his uh, career overseas that really touched me as I was doing the research and I, I retraced his steps through the war. Um, starting in North Africa and then went to Sicily and Italy, France, went to the Pacific. And there's this uh, moment when he's in Sicily where he had gotten sick. The doctors called it a uh, battlefield fever. Um, he basically was, you know, suffering from exhaustion, from lack of sleep, from, uh, you know, just being on the front lines too long. And he was in this, this tent camp, uh, medical tent, and he's rec recuperating. And all of a sudden one day, um, a couple of stretcher bearers bring in um, this man. He later finds out his name was John, and John was really on, on his last breaths. And a, a, a chaplain came in and read him his last rites, and Ernie's watching this you know, happen in real time. And he wrote a column afterwards where he said, I just felt like I needed to get down on the ground and hold his hand and just be with him. Uh, in his last moments on this earth, but he doesn't. He stops himself. He's afraid that that it's not proper or not not appropriate. And he later says that that was one of the greatest regrets of his life was that he he wasn't there for that soldier. And I think that was the moment for him where he really went from 
I'm here as a correspondent and I'm writing what I observe to I'm here and I'm in it and this is this is what I'm supposed to be doing. I'm supposed to be telling these stories. Mm-hmm. And there there's good and bad in that, right? I mean, he he uh, did this incredible work, but it took an incredible toll on himself and yes. on his family. An extraordinary moment there and Ernie Pyle, who set sort of a template in many ways for war correspondents going further, who play such important roles, telling the stories of conflicts up to this present day. We should also note he was killed by a Japanese sniper in April of 1945, just a few months before the world, the war ended. The new book is The Soldier's Truth, Ernie Pyle and the Story of World War II. It goes on sale tomorrow. David Christer, thank you so very much for joining us today.